Hello there, my name is Emily Good and welcome to my living room. <laughs> I am a mom of two, I am a yoga instructor, and I'm also a reader. Today, what I am going over are my 2023 reading plans, my reading goals, things that I'd like to accomplish. Uh, I've got a couple of different things that I'm trying to do, um, so I'm just going to get into it. So I have, I, I do have my little reading journal here that I'm going to be documenting everything in. Um, I have a nonfiction page and I have a fiction page. So I'm going to go over... I'm going to just do general goals for my nonfiction because that's still very much to be determined. Um, and here I, I want to show you um, nonfiction NILFs. Those are novels I'd like to finish. <laughs> I saw that on a uh, Facebook page and I loved that. I think it's so much more fun than TBR. So uh, that's what my new TBR list is called, NILFs novels I'd like to finish. I thought that was funny. So I guess you <laughs> uh, get my humor. So, um, okay. So nonfiction NILFs for 2023. I have some different ideas written down, which I won't uh, bore you with because I'll just do that at the beginning of each month, like what I actually plan on reading. But um, my goal for 2023 is to read 24 nonfiction books. So that's just two a month. I ideally I would read more than that, but I'm trying to be better about not uh, there's there's Stella. Of course, she always has to be here. Um, but yeah, ideally I would read more than that, but I'm trying to not put too much pressure on anything. I'm trying to just really enjoy things and take things as they come. So 24 nonfiction books seems doable and accomplish I, something I can accomplish, but ideally it would be more. And I do have some different ideas written down, but I will let you know what I specifically plan on reading each month as they come. So that is my nonfiction goals. I would just like to do two a month. Um, because I am, okay, so let me, let me just tell you why I'm trying to kind of tone it down with the reading. It's because I'm working towards something, uh, businessy, I guess something for a career and I'm hoping to be done with that in June or July. That's, that's what I have written down as a goal for me. So in the meantime, while I'm obtaining that goal, that is kind of my main priority. So I thought two nonfiction books a month, uh, is doable for that. So that's kind of why that's happening. I hope I'm not boring you, but that's just kind of why I just wanted to give you a little backstory into why I've kind of way narrowed down uh, my goals. This is the exciting part. Fiction, NILFs, novels I'd like to finish in 2023. I have a stack of books here. I'm going to show you what those are. Um, I, what my goal, I do have a couple of different series that I'd like to read. Uh, but more so, honestly, I feel like I'm constantly getting books from the library and I'm constantly buying more books, both of which I enjoy doing and I will not stop doing. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Uh, don't get it twisted. But I would like to, I don't know, sometimes it makes me feel sad to think that I have all these different beautiful books that are sitting on my bookshelf that I'm not reading or actively pursuing to sit down with them and spend some time with them. Cause I love my books. I, I love, I love, I love who they are and I want to appreciate them. So I have them. I've spent money on them. I would like to appreciate them. So I thought that it would be fun. I'm going to do like a, a NILF jar 
And uh, these are the books that I'm going to add. So I'll go th through those ones first. And But my, my actual number goal for fiction books is 36. So three a month I think is totally doable for me. Uh, obviously, once I get that, um, once I achieve my business goal, I will have more time, I think, to read, I'm thinking. Uh, but because right now at nighttime, I'm working on that. I'm not reading. So that's kind of dwindled down my time for reading because <laughs> I don't have a whole bunch of time to sit down and read. Um but yeah, 36 fiction goals is my is my goal for the year. And these are some of the books that I have that I would like to read. And I'm still leaving it open for I'm still leaving it open for library time and maybe possibly purchasing new books. Um so yeah. Okay. So these are the 1 2 3 15 books that I have that are standalones and then I have two different series that I want to read so I will I will go over the standalones first Island by Aldo Huxley I have read this before I have listened to it before I don't remember a whole lot about this book I initially heard of this book from reading The Power of Now I had to look who the power of now is by. So I know the name. I just sometimes I get nervous and I'm like, oh my God, I look like an idiot right now. And then I like stump myself. But um, Eckhart, I did have to check the bookshop. I'm like, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, Eckhart Tolle, the power of now is where I first heard about this book. So I'll just tell you what got me to read the book and I can uh, invite you to read it. Um, when was it even published? Hang on. This was published in 1962, again by Aldo Huxley. So this is what got me to read the book. I love it. This guy goes to this island, basically. I could be totally butchering it, but this is the gist. Okay. So he goes to this island and these this culture lives a completely different way. They're completely away from our society as we know it. They do their their stuff their way. And it's honestly a really remarkable way. It's quite different. Uh, but And I will talk about it after I read it again because right now I'm kind of butchering it. But there are these birds there that they have trained to. It's like every so often these birds, I think they're macaw birds maybe. Is what they're called if I cor remember correctly these birds on this island are constantly shouting out attention attention here and now here and now and like constantly bringing the people of the society back to the here and now that's constantly happening I love that I want to get it tattooed on me somehow some way I'm not sure what my idea is yet but I love the idea of living in a society where I'm constantly being reminded here and now, here and now, attention, attention. I just love that. So I'm adding this to my milk jar. I would like to reread this in the year of 2023. I'm sorry. They won't all be that long. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. So, um, if you've seen my, I did buy this used. That's what this is. Um, I do have the Penguin Classics Deluxe Editions. I love them. I want all of them. And this is one that I have that I have not read. I don't know anything really about this book, but I know that I'd like to read it. So that is going on my TBR, my Nelf jar. Pride and Prejudice, again, with the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. I have never read Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> so I, I think I probably should in the year 2023. Here's a humdinger, but I really want to read this. I do have quite a lovely Stephen King collection. I have read quite a few of his books, 
but one that I have not read that I've had for a while is The Stand. The Stand. I honestly, this is another one. I, I don't know anything about this book. I could sit here and read the back of it, but what's the point of doing that? You could just Google it. Um, I will tell you my thoughts on it after I read it and I'll let you know when I am reading it. But yeah, I would like to read The Stand, a nice big book in 2023. I always have to drop books. I always have to. It's, it's a rule here and it's always a rule that I end up picking up my daughter. So let's see how it goes. Wait, she is pulling down my books. So, okay. So I will let her, I will share anything with them. Um, but I'm not very good at sharing food with my kids and I'm not Good at all about sharing my books. So I don't want her over there playing with my books. So here is my daughter. <laughs> okay. So one of my favorite booktubers, uh, I consider her my friend, Kayla Reads Again. Um, I will link her channel down below. I've really enjoyed uh, getting to know her and her reading style. And um, she's gotten into Agatha Christie lately. And then there were none is one of her is I think what got Kayla into reading uh, Agatha Christie. So I I've had this book. I have a collection of Agatha Christie books, even though I've only read one of her books. Um, so I'm going to read this in 2023. Yeah, you think so? Do you think so? Okay. Will, Will, my boyfriend, uh, wanted me to get Fight Club. He thought that I would really, really enjoy it. Um, so this is actually one of the books that I bought for my birthday haul. So I am, I am going to add this. I, I don't know anything about it. Um, I, I, I have heard that it's not actually about fighting, but, um, I have never, I have never read it. So I'm going to. Bunny, Bunny, I don't know anything about this book either. Oh, honey. Chloe Bunny is, uh, she used to be, I'm not sure who, what she used to be, but right now her name is Chloe Bunny. And uh, this is one of her, she changed her whole channel name and everything because of reading this book. I, I, again, I don't know anything about it. I haven't actually watched any videos of her explaining it really. I think, yeah, Dark Academia is, is what I know. Um, but, so, yeah, Bunny. That's, that's a book I'd like to read. It's her favorite. That's why I bought it. So, I would like to check it out. Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Uh, classic, I think. Kind of a classic. Um, and I've never read it. And I bought it for my birthday. So, I would like to read it by Miss Ann Rice. Okay, thank you, Stell. <laughs> My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfe, maybe? Maybe, um, I'm excited about this. The shocking and strangely tender story of a young woman's efforts to duck the ills of the world with the help of one of the worst psychiatrists in the annals of literature. Sounds good. Sounds interesting. I am excited. Thank you. Stella's is handing me my books. Fahrenheit 451. I love Ray Bradbury. I have watched all of his like talks to authors. I love his passion for the passion that he had for writing. And um, I have never, I have read his short stories. I've read a couple of books of his short stories. I have them on Audible. Yeah, baby. Um, but I have never read his novel. So I plan on it. I plan on it. Thank you. Kerouac's On the Road. I love the idea of a nice long, I think I read that, I read like a quarter of it. I, I got a quarter way through it and then I got into something else. So I never finished it, but um, I would like to. I would like to. So I have that on my, inspired by Jack Kerouac's adventures with Neil Cassidy. 
tells the story of two friends whose cross-country road trips are a quest for meeting, meaning and true experience. So I love that. I love experience. I love, I feel like I love a good road trip story. Um, I can get into it for sure. So that is going to be in my milk jar. Um, let me know if you'd want to watch me setting that up. Um, it might be too late by the time you let me know because I might just go ahead and do it today if I have the time. But um, yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. I may film it just in case you are. <laughs> okay, this is another one that I've had for a long time. Africa in My Blood by Miss Jane Goodall. It is, it's an extraordinary <laughs> self-portrait and letters and commentary of Jane Goodall's early years. From childhood to the landmark publication of In the Shadow of Man. Uh, it's, it's, it's about Jane Goodall. It's like her early letters to friends and things like that. Um, and Boston Globe said that being with Jane Goodall is like taking a walk with Gandhi. So that's cool. Um, okay. This is one that I'm really excited about. I connected with, uh, this author on Facebook. He is extremely passionate. I did talk about him. I talked about uh, the author in my, what, in one of my videos already. I showed me opening up the book. But this, it's Winter's Myths by Gage Greenwood. His newest book is coming out soon. I love the artwork on here. I love the passion that he has. Um, lots of people have said really good things about this. So if you haven't heard of it, uh, he's a wonderful I enjoy, I really enjoy the way that he puts himself out there. I, I don't know a whole lot um, about this, but I definitely plan on reading this. Honestly, I might not leave this up to my, to the jar because I really, really want to get to this because like I said, his new book uh, that's part two of this is coming out um, sometime this year. <laughs> I don't know when, <laughs> but it's sometime. Um, okay, so I've got two more in this list. A Clockwork Orange, uh, another book that I've had for a long time, and I do unhaul books quite a bit, but I haven't unhauled this one because I really, really, really want to read it. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know what it's about, and I'm not going to read the back of it to you because uh, you probably, chances are, you already know what A Clockwork Orange is about. Um, it's a frightening fable about good and evil and the meaning of human freedom. So, I'm going to add that to my little, in the case, last but not least, not least at all. I read this when I had COVID when I was pregnant with her. Uh, so, I have read this fairly uh, recently, but I posted my haul on one of the Facebook pages. I think it's called the Book Hangout Spot. If you're not a part of it, if you are on Facebook, you should definitely join it. I enjoy it so much. And I posted my haul that I did for my birthday and like 98% of people commented on the fact that I got Rebecca. They love this book. People love it. I enjoyed it a lot. If you read Verity and enjoyed, uh, I stand by this. I stand by my comparison, comparing Verity with Rebecca. Uh, just like the ghost of a woman in a house is uh, really amazing. It's a beautifully written book. So if you did read Verity and you enjoyed that type of thing, this is just that basically without the smut. And um, I don't mind Colleen Hoover. I, I know that people hate her. Um, I think just because she's so hyped because people are going to hate things that are hyped. But honestly, uh, I don't mind Colleen Hoover. But if you don't enjoy Colleen Hoover's writing or her hypeness, I recommend Rebecca. If you like what Verity is kind of about and the vibes of Verity, um, I re recommend Rebecca. Okay. And I am nearing the end, I promise you. Here are two series that I want to read. This next one is Ambitious. I'm not a fantasy type of girl at this moment. I would like to get more into it. Will read this series when he was very young. This is another one that he really, really, really wants me to get into. I have listened here and there to the book while he's listening to them. Um, 
and we have watched the movies a couple of times together and I love the story uh, so this is what I plan on reading as well in The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien um, I plan on reading it in 2023. I don't know if I might try uh, to start it in February for like a, a fantasy February type of type of theme. I know she's tired. Um, but yeah, I I plan in 2023 to get through this whole series. I'm excited about it. Uh, let me just show you really quick these beautiful covers. We got this. $1.99. We got this. I think we got it like at a Goodwill. And um, honestly, these, I, I had no idea how beautiful these covers were, but they are literally beautiful. Stella thinks so too. I normally don't like um, movie copies, but honestly, these are like big floppy books and I think that they're gorgeous. So I'm excited about them. Okay, actually two more things that I have to talk about. I totally forgot to talk about the Game of Tones reading challenge that I'm doing. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, but also I want to read Anne of Green Gables. I don't know if I'll do the full eight book series, but at least reading up to Anne of Ingleside. Um, because the last two, seven and eight, I don't believe are Anne, really. I think that there's something else, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong about that, but I'm not sure. Um, honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed in this box that kind of has come apart a little bit. Um, I need to, like, re-tie it or something. I don't know. What the heck? Um, okay, so let me talk a little bit about, and then I'm done. I'm done. I'm almost done. Um, this is a challenge, a reading challenge that I'm doing, Game of Tomes. It is a 12-month challenge. Every month we have a different book that we're reading. I do have the different books down. I do have the different books written down, um, but... So what it basically is, is like, okay, so in January, we're reading A Farewell to Arms, and then in February, we're reading Once There Was a War, and then there will be a live show where we're talking about um, kind of like the similarities, the differences in the two books. So they're kind of comparing the way that the authors wrote the book, sort of similar books, but just written in a different way, and it's all classics. So it's going to be 12 classics that I read in the, in the year of 2023 that I wouldn't have normally read. I am currently reading A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway, and I am honestly enjoying just the simplicity of it. It's just like, I, I just feel like I'm reading into a, a war story that I, I would not ever normally, um, I wouldn't normally experience. I'm enjoying that. Um, so, <laughs> okay, I got frustrated there. Um, you know, when you're trying to do stuff and, and these kids just won't leave you alone, it gets frustrating. So I am doing the Game of Tones. I will link the announcement video down below. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm excited to read 12 classics. Some of them I have read, but most of them I have not. I won't go into what I have and haven't read because of the current situation that's happening. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for 2023. I'm excited for um, to see kind of what of these I'm reading. I was back and forth with wanting to do like a goal setting video just because things change so much throughout the year. So it's like kind of like what's the point but this is just kind of like a something I think I can stick with with having some room for uh shifting to happen so like I don't think that this is an exhaustive list of what I'll read in the year of 2023 hopefully um but it's just kind of like a a baseline it's kind of where I'd like to get started and I will check back in with this I'll kind of do like a mid-year 
how it's going type of thing. So yeah, that is uh, what I plan on doing in 2023. Have you read any of these books? Uh, are you? What are your reading plans? Have you made a video talking about it? Um, are you going to take part in the Game of Tomes challenge? I'm so excited about it. If you're at all interested in doing classics, but not sure if you can kind of stick with it, Maybe try doing like the reading challenge where you get to check in with a group of people. You feel like not so alone. Maybe it feels a little bit more exciting. If classics aren't really your jam, maybe try it in a different way like this where we're doing like live shows. Um, so you're kind of like reading it to have an opinion on it maybe. Um, and you get to hear what other people thought of it, which might help you to understand it more. Might help me to understand it more. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for sure. Um, hey, thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.